<clears throat> well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, I was just out here this morning. We had a uh, little rainstorm sprinkle on us, and I came out to check on my flowers, do some deadheading, make sure they got enough water. Just put my flowers in here on uh, both sides of my yard, and uh, I, it occurred to me that I have a whole lot of uh, solar equipment uh, that I haven't talked about kind of as an altogether package uh, here at my off-grid homestead. Now, I have done quite a few videos on my 400 watt system and this runs uh, pretty much everything in my cabin and it is all the solar power that I have had at my cabin for the last 10 years until I updated last year with a 200 watt uh, recharging station. So let me tell you a little bit about this system then I'm going to show you some other equipment that is also solar that is not hooked into this system uh, that runs independently and that can be used anywhere whether you're on grid or off grid uh, a lot of them have to do with security uh, around my cabin here and uh, they can be used anywhere if you want to start going off grid that, that would be a good place to start then you can also consider putting up a four, simple 400 watt system like this now this system consists of four 100 watt uh, Renogi solar panels these are mon monocrystalline solar panels uh, I've had these now for 10 years uh, batteries the same I've had them for 10 years now I am using uh, AGM uh, sealed uh, batteries uh, made by VMAX tank. I have been extremely happy with those uh, batteries. They came out long before we had lithium or LiPo 4 batteries was these AGMs. Uh, the VMAX tank have been very good batteries. They were originally designed for use in uh, Desert Storm. Uh, they, they, they then released them to the public. I got them. They were quite expensive back then. They're still quite expensive uh, because they have heavier, thicker plates. Last a really long time. I'm going on 10 years now with those batteries and uh, they are only now starting to show quite a bit of loss in capacity and I will be changing those out for LiPo 4 batteries. So I have 400 watts of uh, 100 watt solar panels. I have three 125 amp hour VMAX tanks on this system. I will be changing that out for four LiPo 4 uh, batteries here in the before winter. I will definitely be changing those out. So this is my main system and this system runs pretty much everything in my cabin. This runs my water pump, which is a 12 volt water pump. I have discussed that uh, on other videos. It runs my lights, uh, LED lights in the cabin. It runs my microwave. It will run my, uh, it runs my laptop. And I run a business online, so my laptop is on 24 seven every day of the week. And it runs my laptop for me. It runs all kinds of small cooking appliances. I use this system, especially in the summer, I use this system to recharge a power station. I have a Geniverse power station. I've talked about those in other videos. I recharge that during the daytime. Then at night, uh, to take some of the pressure off of my main system batteries, I use the Geniverse power station for running all kinds of small cooking appliances. Uh, this is, will also recharge my e-bike batteries, uh, but I did add a 200 watt recharging station just for that purpose. Uh, it will re recharge all my tools. Uh, it runs my vacuum cleaner. It runs my uh, swamp cooler. Uh, it runs two different uh, uh, 12 volt. Uh, it runs two different 12 volt fridge freezers in my cabin. In the summertime, what I do is I use one 12 volt fridge as a fridge. I use the other 12 volt fridge freezer as a freezer, so I have two different fridges running at the same time off of this system, just off a 400 watt system. All right, so. This is a system that anybody could set up, and you could set this up yourself. Uh, even if you don't take your entire house off-grid, you could take at least one room off-grid or your office off-grid or something like that, and then use this also as a backup power station in the event of an emergency. In the event of an emergency, then you would have a backup power station that you could at least come, at least keep a lot of your appliances running without need for a gas generator where you may not be able to get gas, and sometimes gas generators just won't start. They're hard to start in the wintertime. They break down a lot. Solar power uh, is a lot more efficient at uh, charging up anytime the sun is up. And this 400 watt uh, system, how I use it, uh, is during the daytime, it overproduces. So I'm producing more power than my batteries can actually accept. And so during the daytime, I can run all kinds of things like my swamp cooler and uh, you know other equipment and recharge my e-bikes and stuff like that during the daytime. Uh, when I have excess power. At night time, I reduce my load down to just the bare necessities, usually just my laptop, a few lights, and my fridges are kept running. But other than that, I don't really run a lot of power at night. Uh, if I'm cooking something, I usually run it off the power station, or I have propane for cooking, uh, and I can use propane for heating as well. 
So this is my main system, but I want to take you around, show you some of the other solar equipment that I use around my cabin that you can also get uh, that doesn't need a big solar panel system like this. So let's look at those. And I've got quite a large yard. I've got a yard about an acre, just a little bit under an acre. And uh, I'm out here in the uh, boonies, out in the country, uh, about 10 miles to the closest town. And uh, so I needed some way to protect my yard. And so uh, I wanted some security lights. Well, if you try to run any of the halogen or lumen lights, they take a lot of power and would really drain my system. So instead, what I got is a uh, yard light, which is a solar yard light. And I will put the links to these if anybody's looking for them. I don't remember the brand offhand. But that up there, which you can see on the post, that is a solar yard light. And it casts a lot of light all the way across the entire front yard and uh, really lights up this place. And right here is where I've got my uh, ATVs, motorcycles, lawnmower. I park in here and then up on my porch up there, I've got an e-bike. So I'm really concerned about kind of this area right here. This also shows up my uh, car and my vehicle so that I can walk. Uh, to my vehicles at night and see what I'm doing uh, and also it is motion deactivated so if anybody walks up on my uh, yard uh, I, it will instantly uh, come on really bright it stays on all the time on low and then it works it jumps up on bright if uh, it de detects motion and the detector is very sensitive uh, but not so much that it will set off like if a moth or something flies around but if something larger yeah it does come around it sets it off and uh, I've been very pleased with those uh, I've been very pleased with that uh, brand of uh, yard light. Uh, it worked all through winter, uh, even when I had three, four days of really low sunlight. Uh, it still worked. I had no problem or no complaints whatsoever with it st getting enough solar power uh, to last you three or four days of darkness. So that is a big yard solar light, and you can get those in one or two sets uh, so that you can put them in different places. I have mine so it gets most of the morning and afternoon sun. Uh, it, a separate solar panel system might work better if you uh, can move the panel where you need it, uh, but this one comes with the solar panel on the back of it, which I'll show you here. Here you can see that the solar panel is on the back top of it, and I've got it angled so it gets the uh, morning and uh, afternoon sun up until, it doesn't get the evening sun, but it does get the morning and afternoon sun. And uh, really bright lights, they're all LED lights, and so uh, that's a very good yard light system. And that's something that any house can get. You don't need to have a big solar system. All you need is some type of pole or a fence to mount it to. Now, I have, like I said, a lot of stuff here uh, that I want to make sure that is protected, and... Uh, one of the ways that I do that is uh, my recent purchase is a uh, is that unit right up there, which is my uh, solar powered. Uh which is my solar powered yard camera and uh, that is runs off of an app off of my Wi-Fi and I do have Wi-Fi and internet here at the cabin I uh, also run off solar and so uh, it runs off of Wi-Fi and it is completely adjustable right now I have it adjusted so that I can take right now I have it adjusted so that I can take uh, video and pictures of my hummingbird feeder and I've been getting some good video and pictures of hummingbirds as they come to my feeder but it will actually scan the entire yard has good night pictures and the solar panel you can see is right there. Now I don't have it in the very best position. Uh, I just kind of stuck uh, it up there for now. It's getting the morning sun. sunlight on it. But so that has been really plenty good. here in now summertime. You can also see I have a little uh, solar keep panel down here. This is like I just a, to recharge it. In fact, I think it's fully charged now. Solar panel. That is actually going into a, uh, a separate battery storage unit, uh, and it runs two LED lights in my cabin for my bathroom. And uh, I put I got that a long time ago before I got other LED lights hooked up because I just needed a couple of lights. Got this little unit here. It's unfortunate they don't sell them like this anymore. They don't sell this brand because I've had this now for 15 years. Uh, powering just a small lithium battery uh, power station in the cabin and then that powers a couple of LED lights that I hooked up and it has worked excellent and it's just sitting here on my porch I could mount it somewhere better uh, but it's just sitting here on my porch that way I can keep the panel clean uh, and uh, it works even when I cover my my uh, solarium up it still gets enough sun in here that that powers up a couple of LED lights you know that you can't run them all day long but you know just to flip them on to see what you're doing and then flip them off it runs perfect and that's great so there's my uh, propane tanks, if anybody's wondering. And uh, I, I use a 30-pound tanks and refill them myself. I have a propane uh, stove uh, for cooking and then a propane uh, heater for heating the cabin. 
of course now everybody's uh aware of these solar yard lights they're they're really cheap i think i got these for a buck 25 at the dollar store excellent for lighting up my walkway of course but also in an emergency if your power is out you can always grab one of these and take it in the house at night and use it for a light and they actually give off enough light that you can at least make your way around your house safely so uh, i use them here quite a bit and usually they will only last maybe a couple of years before they have to be replaced but you know at a buck buck 25 you can get them at the dollar store you can get the more expensive ones they generally last quite a while and do a pretty good job of lighting up a small area then I have another one here. That's another solar light down there. Uh, that one looks like a flickering firelight when it's on, but it's also independent. So those are just some of the uh, small solar uh, equipment that I use around the cabin all the time that any place can use. And then I also have this. This is my 200-watt recharging station. I put this up uh, last year. Uh, that, again, is a two 100-watt uh, solar panels. And it, I just connected them to my trailer here so that I could tilt it up or down to get the best sun. Right now it's laying flat, so it really gets the good uh, summer sun as it gets up higher. Now this is my recharging station. It goes into a 200-amp-hour LifePo for battery and this is used primarily for running my microwave which means I don't have to use that I can use the microwave at night uh, instead of running it off of my main system I run it off of this 200 watt uh, recharging station and this recharges my life pull for uh, 200 amp hour life pull for battery in about four hours from all the use that I use it for and uh, I also use this for recharging my e-bikes which I've shown my e-bikes in other videos that's the Aerial X e-bike, 52-volt uh, Aerial X, which I ride all the time uh, to get back and forth to town to resupply. And I recharge that off of that 200-watt system. And then I also have another e-bike as my backup is over there. Uh, those two panels are not hooked into anything right now. They are just sitting there. Uh, but I will be hooking them up to uh, an additional power station here in the near future. So there is another e-bike, and I also recharge those. So that 200-watt recharging station is used a lot for recharging e-bikes, running my microwave, and uh, just recharging power tools uh, and things like that. And it has a large inverter, so I can also use it for running my uh, snowblower, which my snowblower is hid behind those panels over there. And I've got, you can see, I've got a uh, electric uh, lawnmower sitting up there. A lot of power tools that I run outside will run just off of that inverter and that 200 watt system uh, recharging station. Uh, and you know, 200 watts, that's uh, not very much, but since you're only using these for a short amount of time, you're not, uh, they don't have to run all day long or all night long. Uh, you're just going to use them occasionally when you need to charge something up or run something. Uh, 200 watts and a 200 amp hour battery works great for that okay folks so that is just some of the uh, solar equipment that I use here at my uh, cabin and I live here full-time off-grid I don't just visit the place on the weekends to make YouTube videos I actually live here full-time off-grid with just that 400 watt system and that 200 uh, watt recharging station and then I also use a lot of independent uh, solar equipment like my solar yard lights, my solar camera, uh, and uh, other so solar lights and that for security that don't have to run off of my main system. So they're not going to drain down my main system. They have their own batteries in them. They're so completely self-contained. Uh, they are, you want to make sure that you're looking for equipment that is ISP uh, 65 rated for outdoor use. Uh, so that it will hold up under the weather. I've had no problem with any of these. Uh, they are designed to be outside, and we have some pretty extreme weather here and a lot of snow. So this is all good equipment that you can use anywhere, uh, on-grid or off-grid, but they're especially good for us off-gridders that have small systems. Uh, and if you just want to reduce your power bill, uh, because lights, like a yard light, if you got a halogen light of those, those things can end up costing you a couple hundred bucks a year just to keep a light on your yard, where a solar light like that won't cost you anything and runs all year long. All right, folks, hope you got something out of this video. Have a great day. I'm going to get back to work on my flower garden, and, and I just put in my tomatoes, uh, and I'm getting ready to plant my seeds. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be digging in the dirt and planting my garden. Have a great day, folks.